Hi guys. I got um, cut off or I shut off because um, my flatmate was coming inside to make dinner. So I had a little bit of a break um, and straightened my hair and had dinner. And then I watched a couple more of One Tree Hill because we are addicted. Um, we, my flatmate hasn't seen One Tree Hill at all. So it's quite fun to watch it again. And there's so much of it that I've forgotten. So it's pretty cool. We are on season six, I believe, in like episode 13, I think we just finished, maybe. Um, <clears throat> where Peyton finds out that she's pregnant. Or, like, she knows she's pregnant and she's just told the dad and Brooke. Uh, they find out who kills Quentin. So, yeah. It was a good episode. Uh, it was a good two episodes. Um... Anyways, I kind of wanted to talk about, because I had said, um, I talked about how encouraging it was to have the other people at the race, like, encouraging me, and, um, the people that I was with, um, they have known those, one of those people I have never got along with before, so it was actually really nice to spend time with her this weekend outside of work. Um, and just, it's been about three years since I've even been around her. So we were able to hug and I was able to have a little, little snippet of a chat with her. Um, but yeah, it was nice. Um, did some dancing, which I know is very difficult for me, but I did it. Um, they were all super, super proud of me. They just kept saying how proud of me they were. And, um, you know, they have all except for that one girl, they have all been with me on my journey of life here in New Zealand. So it's kind of incredible to do something like this with them as well and feel so empowered. And they were kind of shocked at how much I didn't give up and I just kept going. And the reason, the scripture verse that kept going through my, through my mind and it wasn't even, um, it's not even 100% applicable to it but was it run the good race run the good race from philippians for i don't have a bible handy so i can read it but i think it's philippians four sixteen or something like that is run the good race um <clears throat> and a bunch of times it's um like paul in a lot of the books that we've just been talking about has been talking about like endurance and suffering and I know it's not the same thing like I know I'm taking it a little bit out of context but I am telling you that I was suffering I was struggling but I pushed on and I was like I'm going to win this race I'm I can do this I, it's endurance, it's perseverance, I've got it in me, and I kept telling myself that, so, more when people weren't around, um, but I did do it when people were beside me as well, and I kept, like, giving this positive talk, because so often I give myself negative talk that I can't do this, and even though I said things like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I feel like I'm gonna die, I knew that I wasn't going to die. And I said that less than I said the positive talk. So that for me is another win. Obviously doing it, struggling through it, it was a hundred times harder than I ever thought it was going to be. Um, I was not prepared whatsoever. But God's strength propelled me through to do it. And I know it could be kind of ridiculous to use it for something as simple as like doing a tough girl gal challenge but a hundred percent did propel me to keep going and I know that there was no one out nowhere else to go so I kind of had to keep going but I could have put myself into a ditch I could have 
just been like, I'm not doing it anymore. I can't do it. And that's not. But I didn't. I pushed myself on. And you know what? I did it with a smile on my face, kept encouraging my teammates, kept encouraging other teams that were with us and running alongside us and trying to help them as much as we were, as they were helping us. And that is what the girls said back in the house. Like they were so surprised at how I didn't give up and that I didn't Like, I never got defeated, and I always had a smile on my face. And you know what? That's what I want people to realize. That's what I want it to be like. Because every single thing I faced in my life, every single thing, yes, there has been parts of me feeling defeated and that I was going to die and shrivel up in every every area. Struggles with my dad. struggles with my mom, struggles to have a family, struggles with separating and divorcing and picking myself back up. But I try to see the positives in each and every one. And you know what? This weekend, that positive shined through in regards to, and I told the girls this, You know, this is why I don't regret the life that I had with Sam or that I met him. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't have these incredible women that encourage me and praise me and push me on and help me and cry with me and laugh with me and dance with me and sing with me. None of these people would be in my life. You know, it was one little crumb. I had the opportunity. It was a a domino effect. I got kicked out of my house. I ended up living with my youth pastor. Because I got kicked out of my house, I all of a sudden got this mind frame that I could move away from my mom. And while I was at the house with my god with with my youth pastor i uh went to a college conference and there was a christian there was two christian colleges there um one was in hamilton in ontario and one was in new brun uh saskatchewan And I came back from that conference and my um, youth pastor was like, it's a, oh no, I I was hell bent that I was going to Hamilton. It wasn't too far from my mom. I could do it. I could go there, but it was too expensive. It was literally, I want to say something like, $16,000 a year and student loan would only give me $10,000 a year so there was no way I could swing it whatsoever and I went to another conference maybe it was the same conference I don't exactly remember exactly how it played out but I went to a conference with my youth pastor and Briarcrest was there and it was in Saskatchewan and I remember coming away from that and he said it's a shame that you can't leave your mom because that school would be perfect for you. It had a Christian ministry um, program and it was in my budget for student loan and it would work. And in that moment, I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to apply. I'm just going to see if I can get in because I can move away from my mom. She doesn't need me. She does. She always needs me. But it was enough that I could be like, no. And I was like, I need more food. I need more scripture. Sunday school has done everything it could possibly do for me. And so I left. And I went to Bible college. And it was actually called bridal college because most people got married. But I did not have any any, um, gentlemen there at all. I liked a couple, but it didn't fall into place for me until I met Kristen in 2002. 
she was dating long distance Ruben and then they got engaged she went there for a year I talked to her on the phone heaps and then she came back she got married she had me in my in her wedding as a candle lighter and I met him and we instantly clicked and if that is the only reason was to bring me to New Zealand to meet him and to have these incredible people in my life then that is all that matters to me it was a domino effect do I think that's that um I have said this before I 100% felt in the moment from the first second I met Sam that we were meant to be from the first second and it was the weirdest thing and I have it written in my diary and I remember being like what the heck is wrong with me and I want that again I 100% want that again I want that moment where I just know for sure and we just have this magical moment like I did with the hug with him that just cannot be denied and we knew that we needed to follow up because something in this life was going on and being stirred and I want that again and I want it 10 times stronger with the next person and it's gonna last with the next person because I was so innocent there and I was so vulnerable there and I am a completely different person to who I was 18 years ago when I came into this country um and yes it has been 18 years and in seven years it'll be 50 year it'll be 25 years and I will have spent 25 years at home and 25 years here actually I will have spent I spent 24 years at home 24 full years at home and it was my 25th year that I moved here to see if I could live here so it's just and these girls have been with me from that journey from the minute because I relieved here they were here I relieved with them in December of 2006 I relieved at the center not December 2006 sorry I relieved with them in It must have been August or September 2006. And I did one day of relieving and they were like, you have to be on our team. And I was like, I'm going home. I can't. I can't take on a full-time job. I'm going home. But when I come back, I will look you up. So when I was at home, I sussed out a work visa and I emailed them and I said, coming back, got a work visa can I have a job and they said yes it was all divine intervention it all was a domino ripple effect and I still feel like that is what it is today I know that I am being prepared right now my potential future husband is being prepared for me and I am being prepared for him And right now, I am just getting to spend this time figuring out who I am and rebuilding that relationship that I fractured with my Heavenly Father and Jesus. Um, Because the Holy Spirit has always been there. He's never left me. None of them have. But you know, I've always felt that and I've always get dragged back in because I love worship and I love um, sunsets and rainbows and all the nature and masterpiece and beauty that God puts in this world. And so that has always been with me in my fiver. But I've let slipped the devotions and spending time with God and Um, building up my own relationship with him and growing uh, 
growing in him and with him. And I am focusing on that now. I'm focusing on building myself up and making myself stronger. And a lot of that is pushing myself outside my comfort zone. And I know there is so much more I could be doing. So much more I could be doing. But again, I am only human. And that anxiety and that self-doubt and that negative talk comes in so much. And it is such a battle for me that when I can achieve something like tough girl, tough guy challenge and push myself outside of that comfort zone and trust those men where I've had no men in my life, none now who have not let me down. There has not been one single man. Scratch that. My Uncle Kenny has not let me down yet. My Uncle Kenny might be the only man who has not let me down. Um, But I don't have as much to do with him, so he hasn't had as much of an impact. I mean, he has had an impact, but he's been in my life for such a short period of time. But all the guys who have been in my life, in my day-to-day life, whether it be for 10 years or five years or 13 years or 40, you know, 35 years for my grandpa. I I mean, I always saw him every single year. I saw my grandpa and I held him in high esteem and I still hold my grandpa in high esteem, but these people have all let me down. They've all let me down. They've all had their flaws because you know what? We're all human and we all make mistakes and we all make stupid decisions. And even I make stupid decisions and will continue to probably make stupid decisions. But I'm trying to learn from those decisions and I'm trying to be better. And I'm trying to just grow myself. And that only comes from me. No one can do that for me. No one knows my limits but me. And it is through my faith and through this um, endurance and this optimism that God has given me as one of my character traits that has kept me going and pushed me through and in the end the only male I see as a male some people see as a woman um the only person that has never ever let me down is God from the moment I was born he did not give up for me and he made me fight like hell and I can say that because I am a 1980s baby and I was born at 26 and a half weeks I was two pounds six ounces went down to one and I with the help of God fought like hell to be here to talk to walk to be able to function. All things the doctors said were near impossible for me to do, I did. And I have done that each and every day of my life. When I was little, when I was a teenager, and now as an adult, I have done that with God's strength. And I cannot put it down to anything else. And I know some people don't believe it. And I know some people will have already checked out of this. And I don't actually care. Because this is my story. And so I'm going to tell it. And that is all I'm going to say right now. So hopefully people like this video. I'm sure those closest and mostest to me who are watching this will love this video and will see my passion and just see, yeah, 
I'm excited for this next chapter. I really am because I've always felt for the last little while that change is in the air and pushing myself out is one of those things. And I'm going to start dance again and my home group is going to change and there's going to be new people that come into my home group. And it's going to be incredible because hopefully I will be able to make a bond with one of these people that I will then get myself to go back to church. Um, this week, my pastor wants us to go to church on Sunday, this coming Sunday, as I say goodbye, they want us to be the honorary members, but it's Father's Day, so again, I'm, yeah, I need to do some real work on this, because he wants us to be standing up there with him as their honorary gifts, guests and family, because that's what they feel like the home group is. I haven't been in the home group very much, or very long, but that's what they want, and um, Father's Day is such a struggle for me, I really, really, really struggle to be there, um, but I'm going to try, and I know that the devil's going to try to get in my head, that I'm going to try to overpower it, and I'll be praying about it this week, and if you're a Christian, please pray about it as well, that I'll be able to make it to church, and yeah, that is the next hurdle <sighs> and it's a hard one it's a really hard one and I shouldn't feel like it's this hard to go to church but I do so watch this space because I know that's where my comfort zone is trying to pull me to I know what I've been feeling it for the last few weeks that I need to go um and there's just been something after the other coming up. So I need to not make things come up on a Sunday. And I need to actually go. Even though I don't want to go to church. But that's for another day. I'm going to go to bed. Because I am tired. And I need to write in my journal. And I just did devotions. So I'm going to sign off. And hopefully you like this video.